Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with David Larkins and we talked about what is coming in 2022 for Pendragon. The interview begins just after I asked David what fans will be seeing coming out this year. I'm going to jump across to that interview in just a moment. But first, remember to subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel. It helps us out and it lets us make more content like this. Thanks. Uh, they're going to see a lot, um, you know, informally and in, in my own mind, if nowhere else. Uh, I think of 2022 as the year of Pendragon because um, that's really when we're going to be launching sixth edition. And so the first thing that's going to be coming down the pipeline, it's in layout right now, uh, is the starter set. And so for folks who are familiar with, um, you know, the other starter sets that Chaos has put out for Call of Cthulhu and RuneQuest, it's um, along those lines, you know, you're going to get uh, basic rules, uh, uh, rules tutorial, um, and then a, a little mini campaign, pre-generated characters, a gorgeous poster map, a bunch of other, you know, as many goodies as we can cram in, basically. So, and then after that, um, we'll be um, rolling out the core books. So I've been writing a series of design journals on the Chaosium blog where I talk about what those are going to look like and how those have developed. Um, but for folks who don't know, there's going to be three volumes of the core rule books um, coming out. And my approach with the line for sixth edition is modularity. So, uh, you know, if you get the starter set, um, maybe you want to just stick with that. You're happy with, you know, the contents, but you might, you want some extra detail. You could get the you know, volume two of the core rules, which is kind of the GM's book, right? It's got a lot of, got a lot more monsters in it, um, in-depth uh, discussions of like religion in the Pendragon setting, uh, you know, how to run tournaments, feasts, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. If you want to uh, make characters beyond the pre-gens and the starter set, well, you know, the first volume, the player's book, you know, if you will, the core rules really, um, you know, would be the one to pick up. And that, that core rule book is uh, intended to be you know, complete. Um, you know, if you just wanted to get the core rule book, you're fine. You know, the, the other volumes are going to give you more stuff to use in your games, but, you know, you can just get by with that, that first volume. So those will be following after the starter set. Um, I'd be happy if we, you know, things are so volatile right now with production and international shipping and everything. So, you know, people ask me a lot, you know, oh, when's the starter set coming out? You know, I can't give you a definitive answer, but I, I'll just say I'll be happy if it's out by Gen Con. You know, that's that's my target. Fantastic. That's a good goal. So modularity being the sort of approach of the new edition, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what fans of Pendragon can expect to see in this edition that is kind of separate from previous editions? People who know Pendragon, who know what to expect, what's going to be new for them? Well, so... I came into the modularity thing because in previous editions of Pendragon, uh, you tended to, to get everything all at once. It was a little bit of a drink from the fire hose kind of, you know, situation where, you know, it, it's like, okay, here's, um, here's how to make your, your player night, but also like, here's how to manage your estate and, uh, you know, fight in big battles and, you know, have a romance and all this other stuff. And it's great, you know, like, and, and a lot of that's going to be in the core rules, but I kind of wanted to, tease things out, particularly like the estate management. Um, you know, people have different opinions on that. So some folks love it. Some folks it's, you know, it's too much. It's not what they're looking for in a game of, you know, Arthurian fantasy. So that's in the third volume, the core rules, you know, among other things. Um, you know, for folks who just want to take it up to that kind of like uh, vassal knight, baron kind of level of play, you know. Um, and that's, that's the other thing for folks who are familiar with previous editions. Um, there's just a lot of, a lot of good content. I mean, it's, I know that sounds really <laughs> vague, but, um, you know, great. This was Greg's, um, ultimate edition. That's what he called it. Sixth edition was his ultimate edition. So he really poured his heart and soul into, into all these materials. And, and, you know, I've written, uh, you know, to fill in some things like I wrote the tutorial, uh, adventure that's in the solo or sorry, the uh, starter set, but, um, the campaign was written by Greg. Right. Um, so we're, we're trying to use Greg's material as much as possible. And I would say it's, you know, 95% Greg's stuff. So it's really like a, a distillation of, you know, 
40 years almost of everything that he was working on for Pendragon and like what he was going for, you know, from the beginning. So when we reach the end of 2022, presumably, you know, barring any great disasters with international shipping and things like that, are we going to be right. looking at a, a line now where we're excited about new books coming out? Are we going to be looking towards new grand campaigns? We'll have everything we need. What's going to be the, uh, what's kind of going to be the state of play ideally by the end of 2022? Ideally, we've got the starter set, the three core books, and maybe we can even sneak in the, the Game Master pack, which is, you know, your screen. Uh, it's going to have Greg's long anticipated Book of Salisbury, which is almost like a sandbox setting for the Salisbury County so that GMs can uh, just kind of, you know, riff off of that. So again, the modularity, you know, if you just wanted to buy the, the core book and the uh, Game Master pack, you know, you could you could build a campaign off of that pretty easily, you know. Um, so hopefully those will all be out game master pack. We might have to push to next year, but you know, we'll see. And then after that, yeah. So the next big project is, uh, revising and expanding the great Pendragon campaign. And so again, I'll just, I'm just going to keep saying it modularity, uh, <laughs> but it's going to be a multi-volume set because one of the things right now with the great Pendragon campaign is as amazing as it is, is that people buy the book and then they feel like I have to start this from the beginning and they start it. And you know, most campaigns of any game are gonna last 10 to 20 sessions. You know, let's just be realistic, right? So that means most people are playing Pendragon before Arthur even becomes king because they make it about 20 game years into the timeline before things, you know, peter out or they put it on pause or whatever. So um, with the revised, uh, great Pendragon campaign, I want for people to like be able to say, oh, you know what? I love the romance and tournament period. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab that volume and that's, that's going to cover 20 game years. So, you know, we're going to play uh, basically from the beginning of the romance period to like right before the grail shows up. And for a lot of people that is kind of a sweet spot, you know, cause that's your classic, you know, high romance uh, era of, of Arthurian fantasy. So if folks just want to do that, that's great. Um, you know, or they could combine a couple, you know, or, or they could do all three, you know, and that's going to cover basically the, the new timeline as we're starting, everything is starting default with the beginning of Arthur's reign when he pulls the sword from the stone. So that's in the starter set, the core books and the new uh, GPC. Eventually, we're actually going to expand the, the books back all the way to the beginning of, um, uh, you know, like the, the saga with Vortigern. Um, so if you're, you know, familiar with that, it's, you know, it's kind of like uh, the time of Arthur's grandparents, basically, you know, um, and so eventually, if you were completely uh, off your rocker, you could do a six volume, really great Pendragon campaign <laughs> that's 130-ish game years. So, um, you know, but a lot of people like that kind of earlier period too. It's sort of your Bernard Cornwell kind of vibe, you know, Dark Ages Britain, um, which is cool. So if they just want to live in that, in that zone, they could do that too. So obviously um, big project, we've been working on that kind of simultaneously to getting Greg's core materials done and getting the starter set done um, and that's ongoing. So hoping we can start to get that out next year we'll see, you know, we don't want to rush it, but it's, it's ongoing at the moment. So, you know, it's exciting. Maybe. It is. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Fantastic. I'd like to drill down a little bit into your perspective uh, of what's coming out for the Pendragon line in 2022. Can you tell us one minor detail, just one small thing that consistently you are super excited about that on a personal level, you just love about what's going to be coming out? Oh, don't make me choose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there are a lot of things um, that I just, I really like. And that, you know, as I've been, you know, obviously I'm running a lot of games, um, you know, behind the scenes, a little bit play testing, although honestly, this game's been play tested, you know, up, down, every way around. But, um, you know, mostly just to kind of keep my familiarity with the rules and, you know, just you know, I'm the line editor of the game, I, you know, should play the game. And so every time I do, though, it's like it, I've been playing Pendragon for 20 years. And really, honestly, with the new edition, it's not hyperbole, uh, it really does bring back that excitement of like, when I first started playing Pendragon, because um, I really think there's just 
so many small changes that just really help focus in that experience of like playing a knight in a sort of you know medieval uh you know setting and um so like for example um and i've written about this a little bit on the design journal but um you know the way that greg uh treated honor for sixth edition um you know obviously it's always been there it's always been an important um part of the game but at this point it's like i really feel like it's elevated it to be equal with glory so it really is like honor and glory you know and um and and players get very very uh concerned with where their honor is at and defending their honor i mean there, there's ways to lose honor now where it's like somebody could start a whisper campaign or you know frankly a player knight could start a whisper campaign against a rival in the in the game right to to cost them honor unless they unless the person who's being besmirched uh talk you know confronts that you know challenges the person to a duel or calls them out in some way you know um it just really it's just another thing that drives uh role playing and 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 um character interaction and just the the whole passions system in general um i just feel has really been um taken to the next level um you know, if you have a lower passion, it's not as punishing to fail if you're trying to inspire yourself. So I'm seeing players, you know, just go for that more often. Whereas in older editions, it was like, unless you had a passion of like 16 or above, it's like, oh, don't bother. You know, um, passions are, are kind of divided up into these little courts. So uh, that sort of max out, right? Because eventually it's like, you can only have so many loyalties or so many loves and hates. So, you know, that's always interesting. Like I, in my game right now, I've got a player who uh, generated loyalty for King Arthur, and then he's got his homage to his Lord and his, his King Arthur loyalty just is going up and up and up and, and he's maxed out in that, in that passion court. So now every time that goes up, his homage to his Lord is going down. Right. <laughs> and so it's very interesting because it's like at a certain point, his Lord's going to notice that. So for fans who are familiar with the core Pendragon experience, what new avenues or new elements are going to appear in the game that they can get excited about? Oh, yeah. I mean, so many things. Um, uh, one, one category, I guess, would be uh, expanded uh, character creation options. So as usual in the core rules, we're going to focus on creating player nights uh, and, uh, uh, you know, from Salisbury you know, just a very kind of straightforward, you know, character generation. And then we're saving the expanded uh, options for, you know, a, a revised uh, Book of Knights and Ladies. Okay. And in fact, the ladies part is going to be even more played up because rather than just sort of cramming that in as an appendix to the core rules, we're moving that over to that book um, entirely. So the core book is just about playing knights, obviously, male, female, whatever, uh, you know, however you want to play your knight is fine. But as far as playing like a noble woman, that's in the book of knights and ladies or knights and ladies adventurous, as we're going to call it. Um, and um, as well as knights from other cultures and, and you know, around uh, the continent and so forth. The starter set's actually going to have a little bit of a preview of that because we have, you know, a very wide range of knights, you know, from all kinds of different backgrounds. There's one of the pre-gens is a knight from you know the byzantine empire for example you know um we have knights who are descended from you know um uh, the uh, allens who were sent as mercenaries to roman britain you know that sort of thing um so that'll that'll be showing up in in that volume but also in addition to that and this is something i've been excited about for a while now is uh we're going to bring out a couple books sort of um you know, companion volumes, although, you know, they're independent, uh, you know, they can stand on their own, um, examining uh, magic and spirituality. So it's sort of like, um, you know, enchanters, ladies of the lake, uh, saints, you know, all that sort of thing. These aren't intended as like primary characters, right? They're supporting characters who might show up in a narrative. So like one of my favorite things with the with the magicians in particular is like you can bring in your magician character for a particular scenario and that's fine but you could also bring in your magician character and do a guest gm spot where you take over running the game for that session and the magician is actually sort of the antagonist or the foil 
uh, you know, they're, they're maybe setting up some kind of magical challenge for the other knights to go through to sort of prove that they're, you know, chivalrous knights, you know, uh, sort of like how Morgan Le Fay, you know, sometimes she's an ally and sometimes she's an enemy and she, you know, ultimately is with Arthur at the very end, you know, but then she's also, you know, uh, actively worked against him, you know, so I think that just, that has some really interesting possibilities, you know, for gameplay. Uh, and uh, that book in particular is, is fantastic because it just goes into a lot of detail. All the magic in there is taken straight out of the romances. Nothing's like invented from whole cloth. It's all, you know, all the, all the, all the enchantments, um, the magic items, if you will, all that stuff appeared in some textual source, you know, from the romances. So it has, it has a feeling to it that is really unlike any uh, magic system I've seen in an RPG before.